Good afternoon and welcome back to our final day of Green and White Uploaded. Today we will be discussing social, social and cultural studies, but before we get started with that, I would like to introduce myself and my co-host. My name is Molly Barnes. I work out of the Office of Admissions here at Michigan State University. I work in the admissions department as an admissions counselor. And then we have Mike Rake over here, who's my partner and co-host. Hi, everyone. Thank you all so much for joining us. As Molly just said, my name is Mike Crick. I'm also an admissions counselor here at Michigan State University. We're both really excited for everyone to join us today. Uh, Molly, can you give us a quick overview of what the day is going to look like? Absolutely. So we are wrapping up the week um, with our last and final interest area day. We started this about a week and a half ago, where every single day we will discuss um, some things about the area of interest. We'll talk about MSU facilities and programs. You'll be able to submit questions as we have live student panels. This is giving you an opportunity to see what this interest area is all about. I know not everybody knows what they want to do for the rest of their lives, and there's some of us who know exactly what we want to do. So with today's area of interest, if you're interested in languages, cultures, politics, history, psychology, religion, or even gender studies, and so much more, then today is going to be the right fit for you. Without further ado, I want to kick things off to Allison over in Career Services. She is our partner, and she's going to share with you some industry overview. Take it away, Allison. Hello, I'm Allison Fox, and I'm a career consultant with the Career Services Network at Michigan State University. The Career Services Network is a seamless connection of career services professionals located in college-based and centralized career centers across MSU's campus. Our mission is to lead MSU in providing valued career resources and relevant connections that empower students and recent graduates to achieve successful career outcomes. Whether you're interested in selecting the right major, exploring career fields and industries, looking for a part-time job or internship, preparing for an interview, or networking with alumni and employers, our team is here to support you. We offer a range of services, including one-on-one -on -one advising appointments with general and discipline-specific career advisors, hundreds of career events aimed at helping you explore fields and connect with alumni and employers, an on-campus interviewing program, connecting you with employers both in person and virtually. Handshake, a career management platform with thousands of internships and job postings. And MSU Connect, a platform bringing the Spartan community together through mentorship and purposeful connections. Today, we're excited to present information on the social and cultural studies interest area and how it relates to careers. People who are interested in social and cultural studies may explore careers that help others, provide a service, or explore the world around them. Those that pursue careers within this interest area often have strong communication and listening skills, social perceptiveness, and are problem solvers. Common career pathways associated with the social and cultural studies interest area include, but are not limited to, social work, clinical psychology, school counseling, nonprofits, museum curation, behavior technicians, and city planning. You can learn more about these and additional careers and industries by visiting our website, careernetwork.msu.edu, and utilizing career exploration resources such as the Occupational Information Network, also called ONET. It's a site that gathers data from the Bureau of Labor and Statistics. Here you'll find a great deal of information on career paths and the knowledge, skills, and abilities critical to jobs and appropriate education fields and levels. We also have Candid Career, which provides a fun, effective way to explore careers and learn about jobs through thousands of one to two minute video clips. Pop on to discover career fields you didn't even know existed, hear from industry professionals about what it takes to get hired in their fields, and gather intel from quick Get Hired videos that cover topics like interviewing, resume writing, and networking. While major does not always equal career, it is helpful to have an understanding of majors that are commonly associated with each interest area. And the next two slides provide you with a sampling of majors at MSU that are associated with the social and cultural studies interest area. Here the list continues, and as you review this list, as majors of high interest stand out, make sure to take some time to learn more about each by visiting MSU's website at msu.edu. 
Now that we've introduced you to related degree programs, let's talk about why gaining experience outside of your degree program is also important and helps you to become career ready. Earning your degree alone is not enough to prepare you for life after college. We know that employers want to see how you have capitalized on your experiences both in and outside the classroom, applying what you have learned in those spaces. They are looking for evidence of transferable skills, such as the ones listed here. Gaining experiences outside the classroom helps with your overall education and career readiness. Employers like candidates who have workplace experience, whether paid or unpaid, Experiences help you build confidence, explore interests, test out organizations and positions, and build skills while expanding your professional network, meeting people you may not have met otherwise. There are a lot of great ways to gain experiences and skills, and many opportunities are available for you right at MSU, such as community service projects promoted through the Center for Community Engaged Learning, internships, which are available both on campus and off campus, undergraduate research projects, part-time jobs within MSU's many departments, education abroad experiences, and becoming involved in student organizations. There are numerous ways to gain experience and develop your expertise as a social and cultural studies student. You might browse MSU's many education abroad offerings and choose a program that is well suited to your area of study and interest. You could advocate for issues important to you on a local or national campaign. You could work part-time at a museum. You could serve on a community board, either in mid-Michigan or back home. You could volunteer at a nonprofit focused on issues of interest to you. And you could job shadow or pursue an internship at a law firm. Some majors at MSU, such as those within James Madison College and the Residential College in the Arts and Humanities, have a mandatory experiential learning component that invite you to take your studies outside of the classroom and into spaces like those just mentioned. Career services, especially the career advisor within your chosen college, can help you identify and pursue opportunities that pair well with your degree. You can continue to learn more by visiting our website at careernetwork.msu.edu. You'll find many resources that you can utilize now to explore career options by interest area. Be sure to also check out some of the general resources that I mentioned earlier, such as ONET and Candid Career, or look at our career outcomes that display postgraduate outcomes of MSU undergrads, offering a snapshot of the directions Spartans take their degrees upon graduation. And consider creating a LinkedIn account, a powerful networking tool to help you find connections in your fields of interest, including industry experts who are Spartans. Finally, Follow us on Instagram, where you'll find a variety of tips for exploring your interests and potential career paths. We encourage you to stay connected with career services throughout your time as a Spartan. Thank you for your time and go green. Thank you so much for sharing that great information, Allison. And we also want to extend a huge thank you to the rest of our members of the Career Service Network, helping our students achieve their goals throughout every single academic year. Uh, next, week we're going to transition to a notable alumni. His name is Kevin. He's got some great information to share as well. Hi, I'm Kevin Clark. I'm an operations planning manager at New York City Emergency Management. I majored in international relations and government policy studies at MSU James Madison College, class of 1987. Whether you study arts or biology or chemistry or engineering or government policy, Michigan State University has a wide variety of classes and programs to offer to supplement your education. My senior year field experience helped bring about the 1989 Historic Preservation Code for the city of East Lansing. That helped me learn that all politics is local. Collaboration with competing parties is part of the process. As an emergency manager and as a city government employee, those are probably the most valuable experiences I could have gotten in school. That Spartans know what they can do, do what they say, and get the job done, even when it's hard. Spartans will. Thank you so much, Kevin. And we appreciate you sharing your information, information both inside and outside of the classroom. I now want to kick things over to Alec. Alec is a senior here at Michigan State University, and he is majoring in our theater department. And he has prepared some highlights for you in regards to all things social and cultural studies. Take it away, Alec. 
As a social and cultural studies student at Michigan State University, you are asked to think about what you will do to transform the human experience. You will focus on applying what you learn in the classroom to make a difference in the real world. Students interested in social and cultural studies may choose majors in politics, history, psychology, languages and cultures, religion, gender studies, and more. You can also explore different areas of study by choosing a minor or participating in cross-collaboration opportunities. Regardless of major, MSU's coursework in social and cultural studies emphasizes field experience through experiential learning opportunities. There are also various support networks for students like the Women's Leadership Institute, designed to support and empower MSU women with leadership aspirations. For students who are interested in studying social justice, MSU offers many specialized programs to become informed, active, and dynamic problem solvers. MSU's Citizen Scholars Program gives students meaningful opportunities to develop global awareness, practice their communication strategy and media skills, and participate in civic engagement. Similarly, our Peace and Justice Studies program explores issues of human rights, social justice, peace, violence, and conflict, giving students the critical thinking skills and knowledge of analytics to understand how power and injustice operate. And in MSU's Human Rights Lab, students can even gain experience by working on behalf of human rights violation investigations. Students interested in a small, liberal arts college experience with resources of a Big Ten University may want to consider one of MSU's residential colleges. James Madison College offers world-class public affairs and public policy programs that has a 97% placement rate into graduate programs and careers. Another great option is MSU's residential college in the arts and humanities, where students prepare for meaningful careers by examining critical issues through the lens of culture, the visual and performing arts, community engagement, literature, philosophy, history, writing, and social justice. There are also some fantastic labs that students can use to put what they learn into practice. The Sociolinguistics Lab is where students can work on projects in language variation and change, language processing, and more. The lab has specialized software, audio equipment, and a library of sociolinguistics books. MSU also has a Neurolinguistics Lab and another lab that focuses on the acquisition of language by children. Also, did you know that MSU offers amazing education abroad opportunities around the world? Fun fact, MSU leads U.S. universities in the number of different African languages taught and the number of study abroad programs in Africa. MSU's College of Arts and Letters also offers student clubs for every language taught there, which is a great way to practice what you learn in the classroom. Spartans focused on social and cultural studies leave the university as global citizens. We have many successful alumni working in settings like schools and universities, governments, health systems, nonprofits, media organizations, law firms, cultural organizations, and more. A focus on inclusivity and equity, numerous service learning and community engagement opportunities, and a unique path for each student's social and cultural interests is what sets MSU apart. Spartan graduates are human-focused leaders and collaborators prepared to take what they've learned and make a true, positive difference in the world. Alex has been with us for the entire Green White Uploaded series, and he has done a tremendous job sharing all this great information. So thank you so much, Alec. Uh, what we're going to do next is transition into a live student panel. Um, before I have them introduce themselves, I do want to remind everyone joining us live today to submit your questions right now so we can ask our students in real time. Uh, but with that, I'm going to have Katie introduce herself uh, right now. Go right ahead. Hi, everyone. My name is Katie. I am a senior studying political theory and constitutional democracy at the James Madison College, and I'm also getting a minor in public relations. Um, I'm from Groziel, Michigan. And some opportunities I've had through the James Madison College are awesome clubs I've been involved in. And I've also gotten to study abroad through the James Madison College. And I'll kick it off to the next tour guide. Hello, everyone. My name is Crystal. I am currently a sophomore. Um, well, junior, I guess I should say now. Um, I'm at Michigan State. I'm studying inter interdisciplinary studies and social sciences. Um, in the College of Education with a minor in Spanish. Um, I was actually a residential college of arts and humanities um, 
ambassador for my first year, uh, and I actually left that college to pursue education. So with that, I'll kick it off to the next tour guide. Hi, everyone. My name is Oliver, and I'm a junior. My major is psychology and sociology with a minor in law, justice, and public policy, and I'm from Hollywood, Maryland. And something that I'm really excited about that goes with my major is that I am going to be taking a class that's going to deal with working with juveniles that have been in the juvenile justice system. So that's going to help me get towards my end goal of what I want to do after college. And I am Steven. I am a junior studying interdisciplinary studies in the social sciences in education, just like Crystal. And I'm also coincidentally in the residential college in the arts and humanities with a focus on community engagement as my major. And I'm from Canton, Michigan. And one of my classes I got to teach um, at a second grade classroom for Willow Elementary, which is really where I found my passion for teaching. All right, thank you for so much for joining us today. We really appreciate your time. Uh, the first question is gonna go to both Katie and Steven. Uh, can you elaborate a little bit more about what your experience has been with the residential colleges that you're both in? Yeah, for sure. Um, so as a member of the residential college, my freshman and sophomore year, I lived in Case Hall, which is the home of the James Madison College. So uh, as a member of the residential college, I lived in Case, which is where my classes were, my professor's offices were, um, and my counselors were, and anything that had to do with my major specifically was all right there for me. Uh, so it allowed me to have all the resources I needed to succeed for my major specifically right there, um, which I thought was a great resource. And a lot of people living on my floor uh, were also people that were in my program with me. So I was allowed to uh, really see as many people as possible. Um, they all could help out. We all helped each other out with classes and um, getting to know each other in our program was a really, really good resource as well because then I made friends that I was taking classes with right off the bat. For me, um, I joined the residential college in the arts and humanities as a sophomore. So I just, this is my, I just spent my first year. Um, and the best thing about it is like the classes are relatively small. Like I had a class with like three people in it. Um, so you really get to be close with all the, the students there and the professors, you get to make um, really good connections with them, which will help you down the road when you like letter recommendations and stuff like that. But I would say it's really nice to be able to like know everyone that's in your college and you'll like see them in the dining hall because you all live in the same building and you'll be like, oh, what's up? So and so. Um, and you'll just have a conversation and you're all like interested in the same things. So you have like some of the same values. Um, but it was a really good um, experience for me so far. And I'm just excited to see where it takes me. Thank you both so much for that. Our next question is gonna to go to Oliver. Oliver, can you elaborate a little bit more about what kind of opportunities Machine State gives the students to uh, de you know, develop more on their interest areas, study different things, and doing this all in a man manageable time? Yeah, so one of the classes, one of the requirements for the degree is your experimental learning, which you can take as your study abroad. Or for me, I'm doing my class that I mentioned about working with uh, children in the juvenile justice system. And for me, the reason why this was important is because hopefully after my degree, I'm hoping to pursue a master's degree in social work. So for me, this is going to be a really great stepping stone in order for me to understand like what I really want to do with my degree. And I think that it is going to be really fun. And I think it's going to help me realize that this is what I want to do. And it's kind of like a stepping stone for where I want to be eventually. Thanks so much, Oliver. Our next question is gonna go over to Crystal. Uh, Crystal, can you elaborate a little bit about what research is like on our campus and how to get involved with it? So yeah, um, when they said my first year that um, research is a big thing at MSU, they weren't joking. Um, so my first year, it wasn't really, I didn't really volunteer into it. I didn't really go into it. And my, my roommate went a lot into it. Um, it was a paid position. and. She was basically an assistant to a scientist um, in the chemistry building. But um, this year I'm taking classes um, right now in the summer. And I um, took place into the research project with the uh, Department of Economics uh, as a requirement for my class. So basically, um, you basically just like submit surveys on how um, your professors are, how your experience in the School of um, Social Sciences is, and everything like that. Um, and it can also be beneficial because lots of the things that they send you out on this research I've been doing is um, resources I didn't even know that existed for my major. So um, 
yeah, there's, it, it, it kind of just varies on um, what the research project is and what school you're in basically. But for the most part, it's helped me a lot with finding resources. Thank you very much. Uh, Katie, we're gonna move back over to you. Could you elaborate a little bit more about your study abroad experience and what kind of opportunities there are for students on campus to explore the rest of the world? I would love to talk about my study abroad experience. Um, so I went to Italy for six weeks through the James Madison College. And the program that I went on was based around the foundations of democracy because uh, Rome and Florence are the two of the most notable cities uh, on the planet known for their governmental foundation. Um, so it was really cool because we were able to uh, we went with a professor from James Madison, and so we had class with him, and it ran just like a normal class that we would be, uh, we would be taking in East Lansing, but then we were able to walk outside the class, walk down the street, and see exactly what we were talking about in class, like the, the buildings and the history was all around, um, so it was really cool because we were directly learning about uh, th things we would be learning about in an MSU classroom, but then we had that hands-on experience out right outside, which was really cool. And MSU does a great job of having those programs for any major you're in. Um, pretty much whatever major you're in, minor, any sort of interest you have, those resources with study abroad are everywhere because there's so many places we go to. There's so many different programs um, that link into all the different majors and any sort of interest you have. So you can get that hands-on experience just like I had, which I'm still holding on to. I still think it was one of the coolest things I've done while at MSU. And I, I really encourage anyone who can to do it. And MSU really makes that happen. Thanks, Katie. Our next question is going to go back over to Stephen. Uh, from campus, you can actually see our state capitol building, so we're really close by to downtown Lansing. Can you talk a little bit about what kind of opportunities present themselves for the students on our campus because we are so close to the capitol building? Yeah, um, one of the cool things about being so close to the capitol building is you can just hop on a CATA bus and go straight there and get a tour. Sometimes like when you're going on the bus to Meyer, you take the wrong one and you end up taking the 45 minute bus ride to the Capitol building um, and you decide to hop off and just take a tour. So that's really cool. Um, but there's also tons of internship opportunities. Like I've had tons of friends who've interned at the Capitol building with state senators and representatives. Um, so just the fact that we're so close to the actual building itself, um, they hire a lot of MSU students for their internship programs. And it's a great way to get that experiential learning requirement and to see if you like really wanna go into the political field. Thanks, Stephen. I hope your bus drivers don't take too many wrong turns because that's a very long trip to get to the Capitol building that usually takes just about five minutes. Um, but our next question is gonna go to all four of you. Can you elaborate a little bit more on how you decided on your major? Um, you know, the whole point of this program is interest areas and what you might be interested in overall in studying, but not necessarily a specific major. So it's really interesting to hear how students decide on the actual major that they're in. Yeah, for sure. So I'll start. Um, so I, when I was applying to Michigan State, I knew that I was interested in potentially going to law school down the line. Um, so when I was looking at the different majors that could apply to a potential law student, I came across the James Madison College and the aspect of a residential college was really, really appealing to me. Um, but my specific major, political theory and constitutional democracy, really allows me to look at past governments, look at philosophers who have examined past governments um, and tie it into what our government looks like now. Um, so for example, I took a Supreme Court class in James Madison last semester. That was really interesting to me because I was able to read um, all these different court cases um, throughout our history that allowed me to see how we've progressed to get where we are today. And that was very interesting to me. Um, and that sort of thing is what I was looking for when I came here, because I didn't, I was just looking for a more in-depth um, in depth class experience into what our government um, was founded upon and everything that's come since then. So um, James Madison really gave that to me, which I appreciate very much. <laughs> Um, so to answer that as well, um, it was interesting because I always wanted to be a teacher I knew. Um, 
And I came here, I was recruited um, by ARCA, which is the Residential College of Arts and Humanities. And I started there and I loved my time there and everything, all the people, the classes. But with time, I realized that I want to do more into history and I want to do more with politics and stuff like that, but still be able to teach it. So I found this um, College of Social Sciences once I got accepted into the College of Education. Um, basically, I get, um, what is it, four different subjects. So it's geography, social studies, well, social studies is the general one, but I mean, geography, political science, history, and um, economics. And it's everything that I'm interested in. Plus I get to minor in Spanish. And I thought that was a perfect fit. And it's it's so broad. So the possibilities are endless once I get a job. Uh, I can be a teacher in any of those five fields, which is really reassuring. So there's so many opportunities here, which is what I loved about um, choosing ISS. So when I applied to college, I was very unsure of what I wanted to do. I had no clue. I took one psychology class in high school and I thought, well, I know once I started looking into colleges, I knew that MSU had a good psychology program. So I decided that that's what I was going to do. I was still a little unsure once I got here, but then after I got more into my classes and I started taking more psychology classes and my experimental learning uh, like opportunity came up, I really realized that what I wanted to do was that I wanted to work in a social work type of aspect. So it was me changing my mind a bunch. And then I ended up taking more classes and I just kind of understood that that's what I wanted to do. And I wanted to help people. And I knew that this was going to give me the opportunity to do it. I have a similar situation like Crystal. Um, I've always known I wanted to be a teacher. Um, so I came to MSU as a history education major because all the history classes I took in high school, like I love them. And it's like telling stories about things and that's what I like to do. Um, and then I found out about IDS through one of my friends and I found out you can teach like more, just more than history. So like political science, economics, geography. So I decided to take that as my major and then joining ARCA, the Residential College of Arts and Humanities. It took all the things that I liked about IDS and then added more to it. So like the arts aspect, I've always been super interested in and I love doing stuff like that. Um, so I just have a wide variety of topics that I can talk about and I can teach. Um, and that was really intriguing to me and um, just like the different opportunities that would come from that. Thank you all so much for those answers. Our next question is a pretty specific one, so we're going to toss it over to Crystal. Um, from your experience with MSU economics and the economics department and your classes that you've taken, are the courses more math-based or are they more policy-focused with the uh, teaching style? Well, it's interesting because I'm taking it in the summer right now. Um, it's a lot of math. Um, for the most part, because all I remember from high school was just learning vocabulary. And now it's a lot more like you have to apply math, but as well with the political aspect of it. So it's it's not too hard because they give you so many resources. But it is, I would definitely say, leaning towards more of the math aspect of um, economics, for sure. Thank you. And our next question is going to go over to Oliver. How would a degree in social or cultural studies uh, translate into more options for a like graduate level degree, something in potentially business or going on to law school or something like that? So for me, once I started realizing what I wanted to do, I started looking into, for me particularly, a social work degree, a master's in social work. So I realized that having my background of psychology and sociology, that would allow me to show that I do have the social science background in order to pursue my master's degree in social work, which hopefully I will get. But I think that with the psychology degree and just the social science degrees in general, there are so many different paths that you can take. And there are multiple, like there are ways that you can find it within your classes, with your minors, with your opportunities that you get. So I think that even if you have such a broad major, there are so many other ways that you can find out what specifically within that major, what you want to do with it. All right, great. Thanks for that. And our last question is going to go back out to all four of you. Um, what kind of advice would you like to share students who are in high school right now and about to graduate heading off to college? OK, so I actually really love to talk about this. Um, my advice to you is tied into my favorite part about Michigan State. Michigan State has so many opportunities for you in 
any form. So there's so many different clubs that you can join, so many different uh, classes you can take, so many things that you can branch out and try. Um, so if there's something that you're interested in trying, there's definitely somewhere on campus you can do it. Um, if there's something you're already comfortable with and want to expand upon, there's definitely somewhere at Michigan State that you can do it. So my advice is to when you're at Michigan State, you have the opportunity to try all these different things. Go for it. Um, I was supposed to take a scuba diving class in the fall. I've never gone scuba diving before. Um, so I was completely branching out for my last semester. And those sort of experiences are ones that you really only get at Michigan State. And ones that I love having um, that access to while I'm here on campus. Um, so that sort of thing is what I would advise all of you to do is to branch out, try something new. Um, Michigan State really enables you to be able to do all of those new things. Um, so get the, get the ideas rolling. What do you want to try that you haven't been able to do so far? Because uh, Michigan State will let you do it. Yeah, I like to say that um, MSU is very reassuring, a, re a very reassuring place. Uh, I would always freak out before I moved in, but if I didn't have any friends, if I didn't like know anyone and you know all that nerves and everything um but once I got here it was like literally a second home I got in the elevator my first day to like move into sci-fi and the me and the lady in the elevator had like such a nice conversation she was a student too and I was like oh so people aren't mean you know like you think that um it's a lot tougher than it is and it's not uh, MSU will definitely have your back you will make friends and it will be okay I think that my advice would be don't be afraid to take second or third chances on something. I think that a lot of people, when they think about college before they come, they think that it's a one and done type of thing that you have to get everything right the first time. And my experience and people that I know their experiences are not that way. I know people that have changed their major multiple times. I know people that didn't like this one particular class they took, so they just changed their entire major. And I think that that's something that we're kind of encouraged to do is kind of like take chances, try something new. And I think that a lot of times we think that our college journey needs to be perfect and it doesn't need to be perfect. You can take those chances and try new things. And I think that here at MSU, we have a lot of, we have a lot of chances to do that. And it's, I really appreciate that. So that would be my advice. For me, I would say when it comes to picking your major, make sure you pick something that you know, you're interested in, which means you should take time and don't just rush into a major. Um, MSU has so many different majors to offer from and each one of them has their own little niche to it. Um, and you want to choose something that you want to do for like a job and a career um, because, you know, it's very cliche, but like if you love what you do, you don't work a day in your life. And when you're choosing your major, I think that's a really important thing to th consider. Um, and don't be afraid to change your major more than once. Like I've changed mine three different times, all within the realm of education, but different things within education, like from history to elementary education and now to um, social studies education in general. Um, I think it's a really important thing to choose what you love to do. All right, well, all four of you, thank you so much for spending time with us this afternoon to share a little bit about your MSU experiences. We all really appreciate it. So thank you all so much. And what we're gonna do next is just transition to a couple of housekeeping things before we sign off for our last day of Green and White Uploaded. First and foremost, if you found any of the things that we talked about today or in any of our other sessions interesting to you, I highly encourage you all to take a look at our various websites online, not only for the specific colleges and majors across our campus, but also take a look at our admissions website, as well as our College Spotlight Series coming up. So in the next two weeks, we're going to be hosting something called the College Spotlight Series, where we're going to be taking a deeper dive into the specific colleges within the universities where your majors are held. Um, to learn more information about this, please visit us at admissions.msu.edu forward slash spotlight. Additionally, uh, there's no more sessions for us to remind you about, but I do want to say if you want to visit or rather revisit any of these sessions and have them um, recorded for you, rather they were recorded, uh, you can take a look at greenandwhiteday.com and find links to their, our YouTube page where we have all these different interest area days highlighted there, recorded for you to get more information. Um, but thank you all so much for joining us today. I'm going to invite Molly back to kick us out. Thank you so much.
Thank you, Mike. And again, we'd like to thank everybody who has worked behind the scenes to make this program possible for you. And especially you at home for watching this live stream with us. This is something completely new during 2020 that we're doing. In the past, we've had you come to campus and go over all of the programs with you. So if you still wanna see what the program or the um, school is all about, I encourage you to go to liveon.msu.edu so you can see some virtual tours. Hopefully things will get back to normal soon so you can visit MSU. You. But again, we'd like to thank you for joining us and we hope you go green. Go green. Go white. <laughs>